Is your brain not getting enough oxygen at night when you sleep? And is that the reason why you are fatigued? It turns out that 90% of people who have this problem are undiagnosed and they don't realize they have this. And so this is something that we need to talk about. I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory. It's my job to figure out how to treat um, chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and diseases like that. And so I usually talk about, in these videos, the findings that come out of our laboratory, and I'll continue to do that. But I said earlier that I also want to spend a little bit of time telling you about things you might can do right now to help your fatigue. And that's because science is a pretty slow and complicated process, and it can take many years for an effective treatment to become available. And so I want people to know what they might be able to do in the meantime. So this is one of these videos to do that. One of the things you can do while you're waiting for the big treatment to come uh, around the corner is to rule out all the possible reasons why you might have fatigue. You should not have fatigue. It, there's no such thing as normal fa fatigue, not chronic fatigue. You shouldn't have fatigue because you're 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. If you have fatigue, it tells you that there's something dysregulated in your body. You need to find out what that is. And your PCP, your primary care physician, has an obligation to keep testing to find out why you are fatigued so you can correct that problem. So ask your doctor to keep testing until you find out what is wrong. I know that this is not always done because when we run studies and we have people come in and we screen them, we very frequently find things wrong that they didn't realize uh, we're wrong. And so we find um, medical issues that were not properly tested before they came to our laboratory. And so everyone needs to test as many things as they can as long as they have unexplained fatigue. So I'm going to start a list of the most common reasons why you can have fatigue. And then we'll work our way down to the less common. And if you go through all of those things and get them tested, you may find that there actually was an explanation for your chronic fatigue that you just hadn't um, tackled or hadn't tested before. And so that's definitely something you can do. Now, one of the things, the, one, the thing I want to talk about today is brain oxygen, and particularly your brain oxygen at night. So I do a lot of work with brain oxygen. We can do MRI scans where we can put you in the MRI scanner and we can look at your entire brain and we can know exactly if it's getting proper oxygen. The problem is, is that that MRI scan only shows us if you're getting enough oxygen at that moment. It doesn't tell us if you got enough oxygen six hours before or at the night before. Now, obviously, if your brain doesn't get enough oxygen, you cannot function. It will disrupt everything that you do, but you have to have good oxygen throughout the entire day and throughout the entire night. You might get good oxygen while you're awake. It may be totally fine, but for those six, seven, eight hours that you're supposed to be sleeping, your oxygen may be interrupted, and that's going to cause you to feel fatigued every day. If you do not get enough um, oxygen to your brain at night while you sleep, there is no way you can feel good during the day. So it's something that we need to rule out. Now, of course, what I'm talking about here is sleep apnea. And I want to start with sleep apnea because it's one of those things that you're not likely to have had tested. And the reason is, is because it's a more involved test. You can't just do a blood test like a lot of other things. You have to do a sleep study. And sleep studies are expensive. They take uh, a lot of time. You have to stay overnight in a, in a hospital or a clinic bedroom. And so there's a lot to it. And so chances are you haven't had that tested. So apnea is when your brain is deprived of oxygen while you're asleep. And if your brain is not getting oxygen, you're going to be fatigued. There's two main types of sleep apnea. There's uh, obstructive, which is when as you relax, the tissues of the back part of your mouth will kind of collapse or relax and cut off the airflow, cut off the pipes, and then you're not getting enough air to your lungs carrying oxygen. And so you won't get enough oxygen to your brain because you're not breathing in properly while you're asleep. And there's also central apnea, and that can have multiple causes. I think it's typically associated with medicine. And so if you're taking opioids for pain or benzodiazepines for fatigue, 
or uh, non-benzodiazepine sleep aids can slow your breathing. Um, there's some antibiotics that do it. There's, there's multiple drugs. That'll be one place that your physician might look at. And there's, there's other reasons as well. And there's, there's complicated cases of apnea as well, but typically it's obstructive or it's central. In either case, you're going to stop breathing properly multiple times while you're asleep. You may go 30 or 40 seconds without taking a proper breath. And then as you haven't taken a breath in, say, 30 seconds, your blood oxygen is going to decrease, decrease, decrease. You know, your blood oxygen should be between 95 and 100 percent most of the time. And while you sleep, it should be in that range as well. But if you're not breathing, it's going to go down to 90. It may go down to 85, may go down to 80. And then your brain is going to send an alarm signal to you that's going to jolt you awake and cause you to consciously take a deep breath to get oxygen to your brain. And so you're going to be woken up. Even if you don't remember it because it's so fast, that's what will happen. So you're going to wake up. You're going to gasp for air. You'll get your, your blood oxygen will shoot back up and then you'll fall asleep. Problem is a minute later, the exact same thing happens. And this can happen throughout most of the night. And so just imagine if there was someone next to you every minute, hey, 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 waking you up. And then when you wake up, they go, ah, never mind, and let you go back to sleep. And they do that every night, all night. Of course, you're going to be horrendously fatigued the next day. And that happens every night. You're going to be chronically fatigued. And so that's what it's like. So I know if 500 people watch a video, I know there's a handful of people who absolutely have this. And the reason we know this is because about 15% of U.S. adults will meet criteria for sleep apnea. But as I said earlier, 90% of them have not been diagnosed. And so the majority of people who have sleep apnea, they have no idea that that's why they feel fatigued every single day. So it's something that we need to look at. So I'm going to tell you what you can do to test it. Now, this is uh, not medical advice. So go over everything I say with your physician. And if your physician says, I disagree with this, then you go with what your physician says. But if you've been fatigued for three months, or especially if you've been fatigued for six months and you don't know why, this is something that is uh, warranted uh, to test. So first of all, what can you do to find out if you may have sleep apnea? Number one, ask your physician for a sleep study. You say, hey, I'm fatigued. We don't know why. Can we do a sleep study? And then they may get you in and then you'll get the answer. Um, if you say, Jared, uh, my physician said it's a year and a half wait to get in for a sleep study and the insurance won't pay for it. Okay. If you can't do a sleep study, ask your physician if you can do an at home sleep study. Uh, in this case, they will send you a little packet of equipment and, uh, you can hook it up yourself. And one of them will look at your blood oxygen or look at your respiration. It'll look at some of your brain activity and it's a less involved version of the sleep study. If you do the sleep study, you're going to have a hundred different wires coming off of you. At the at-home sleep study, it's uh, it's less involved. You'll get a little video you can watch, and it'll show you how to put it on. It'll record the information a night or two, and then you'll send it back, and it'll be analyzed, and your physician will see that. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Um, okay, so if you say, well, my physician... Or I tried it and insurance won't cover it and it's going to cost a thousand dollars or something. Then uh, if you do that, if you can't do that, then we go on to the next one, which is if you can't do an at home sleep study, try purchasing a physio monitor. Um, these physio monitors are things that usually they go on your finger and, and it's not the normal pulse oximeter that won't work. It has to be specifically designed to record for 12 or 24 hours and they usually fit on your finger. So these things, these um, uh, exercise monitors or activity monitors that are on your wrist, that's probably not going to do the job. You have to make sure that it monitors and takes um, a blood oxygen assessment fairly regularly, like one a second. And so look for things that are specifically designed for overnight uh, monitoring of pulse oximetry. So if you're using that, you can look at that. You can see, does your blood oxygen dip below, say, 90% multiple times? Do you see it dipping and then coming back and then dipping really low and then coming back throughout the night? If so, take that to your physician and say, here, look at this. I think I'm losing um, oxygen to my brain while I'm sleeping, and that should be enough to get you in to do a proper sleep study. If you cannot afford one of those devices, because I, they probably cost around $150 or $200, and 
you know, I understand that's a lot of money. And considering that you may not have sleep apnea and you may use it three times and say, hey, my blood oxygen is fine all through the night. And then you can't use the device again for anything. So you may not want to get that device. Or you may not be able to afford it. So if you say, Jared, what do I do then? Well, if you can't do that, then enlist your partner to listen to what's happening while you're asleep. They probably already have a good idea, especially if it involves snoring. Apnea oftentimes involves loud snoring, but not necessarily. But ask your partner to listen to the quality of your breathing at night. So what you're really looking for is kind of the rhythm of the breathing. If you snore, so if you have light or moderate snoring, but it's very rhythmic all through the night, that is less likely to be apnea. Now, that's not a way to diagnose. It's just a way to get information. So if you kind of go, you've got a little noise that goes up and then, and then it goes down and it has that rhythmic, slow up and down, like maybe, I don't know, 10 or so times a minute, maybe less actually. Breathing could be pretty slow while you're in deep sleep. But if it goes up and it rolls down and it's like that through the whole night, that's less likely to indicate apnea. But if your partner's listening and instead what they hear is nothing for 20 seconds and then and then this gasping for air and then you'll probably roll around because you're awake and you'll change position or something, uh, that is more likely to suggest apnea. And so if your partner hears this, go to your physician and say, my partner says that, uh, you know, 50, 100 times at night, they don't hear me breathing and then they hear me gasping for air that should trigger a sleep study and get you uh, along that path. Now, if you say, Jared, thanks for all the advice, but I don't have a partner. So in that case, you can get your phone to do the same thing. There are some actually really good apps. I can't recommend any particular apps, but I know there are some good ones that will monitor your breathing and your snoring throughout the entire night. And they're usually marketed as snoring detectors because you can't use a phone to diagnose apnea, but it can give you a clue. And so it does the same thing. It'll, it'll record audio throughout the entire night. Sometimes you have, to un, you have to pay a little bit to unlock that feature. And it'll give you a graph in the morning of the intensity of your snoring. And then you can listen to certain snips throughout the night and see, does your breathing have that rhythmic quality or do you hear that kind of gasping for air? If you find anything with any of these ways, then take it to your doctor and let them listen or let them see it and see if you need to be tested for sleep apnea. If you get diagnosed, there are lots of treatment options to get rid of that problem. Uh, you may get a CPAP machine. I'm sure, you, you, I'm sure you've seen those, a mask that'll help get air to your, um, to your lungs throughout the night. And uh, there's other treatment options as well. There are lots of people who were profoundly fatigued but then when they corrected that problem, they went back to normal. That is definitely possible. So don't, so don't ignore that possibility. Um, sleep medicine is outside of my field, though, so that's really all I can say. And I won't go into the treatment options that would be between you and your physician. This is just a general brief um, overview. So that, that's it. That's at the top of this list. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a next video fairly soon on the second most likely reason that you're fatigued. I'm just going to create this long list, video after video, and give you a list of things to check off and go, nope, wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. And maybe at some point I get to something that you had not tested. And when you do test it, you find out that's actually the reason that you're fatigued. So again, um, many of you will um, have an issue that's related with myal myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and there are not good treatments for that. We're working on that. But a lot of you don't have that. You, it looks like you do, but you may actually have another problem that does have existing current treatments. So stay tuned to the videos, and I'll continue to uh, give you things that you can test. Thanks a lot.